Hey, how's everybody doing? Um, I just thought I'd take this opportunity to do vlog number six and bring you all up to speed on how our adventure is progressing thus far. Um, as you know, uh, we purchased a Tiger Adventure vehicle that we picked up in West Columbia, South Carolina. So I'm just going to give you a kind of a rundown on what's been happening uh, since that time. <coughs> so on November 14th, we took a train down to West Columbia. Uh, to pick up our vehicle at Provan Industries. When we got there, we were informed that they had to put a brand new, another brand new generator in it. So the first generator didn't work right. They put a second generator in it. They said it worked fine. Um, so we spent a little time with the vehicle uh, driving around that afternoon. And instead of staying in the area for a few days, we decided we'd try to come home because time was of the essence. Um, so even though we stayed over one more night, we left and headed up through North Carolina, stayed at a harvest host, uh, an ostrich farm, and during the night the furnace had an issue. Uh, so we were so far from Provan at that point, we decided we would just press on, and then uh, on a return trip when we came back with the Turtleback trailer, we would go through there and, and uh, they would fix it then. So we left uh the ostrich farm headed home uh did all the logistical things that we needed to do to close up the condo get the trailer ready and then uh we hooked up everything and headed out i'm gonna say it was just a little after thanksgiving we we're gonna go to connecticut for four or five days to visit friends and family to say goodbye and then head to west columbia south carolina um while we were home though we developed a generator problem as well. Real bad vibration. Uh, couldn't figure out why it was vibrating, whether it was a mixture problem, whatever, but Provan said not a problem. So we made arrangements to get back there to them by the 4th of December uh, in order to get everything fixed. And in the meantime, John came up with a great idea of having compressed air on board. So he had them, I had them order some parts to uh, tie into the Firestone airbag system so that I could have a couple of air fittings to get air from if I needed to fill tires or, or whatever. So all those arrangements were made to get back to uh, Provan by the 5th. We worked our way back there to the 5th, dropped the truck off on the mo that Monday. Uh, it took three days to get everything fixed. They had some issues with the Cummins tech rep wouldn't come out uh, on the second day like they had asked, whether he wasn't available, didn't want to come out. I don't, I don't know what the situation was. Just didn't seem like there was a whole lot of sense of urgency on the Cummins side of the equation. Provan people, top notch, right there. On board all the time, uh, gave 110%, always. Um, so I have no complaints with that. So furnace was fixed, compressor was uh, upfitted or uh, upgraded, and uh, the generator was fixed. So now we were waiting on license plates. So we were all fixed. We had they were supposed to be forwarded to us while we were down there. That didn't happen. They did. Uh, it's just a long story. But the bottom line was, we still weren't registered officially. We had a temporary 30-day plate which we were, I think we're in our like 15th, 18th day of. So, you know, we wanted to get new plates, but we were, for some reason, they weren't finding us. So we headed to a place called Brickhouse Campground, 50 miles to the north of West Columbia in a town called Whitmire. And great place. So rung out the truck, used the furnace. Furnace worked great, generator worked great. No sooner do we get there, like the second day, plates came to South Carolina. So we go back down to West Columbia, pick up the plates, come back up to Whitmire, stay another night. Then we got a house sit in Milledgeville, Georgia. We got notified we had a house sit. So, whoo, so <laughs> when's that gonna happen? Well, that's gonna happen on the 14th of December. So we had to sort of kind of synchronize where we were gonna stay and how we were gonna work our way down from South Carolina through Georgia to end up at Milledgeville on the 14th of December at about one o'clock. So the plan was stay in Brick House for a few days, go to Newberry, stay overnight there because it's a cute little town, and then go from there to Bussy Point in Lincolnton, Georgia. Uh, camp for three nights there. That, that brought us closer to Milledgeville and then uh, pushed off from Bussy Point 
on the same day that we were supposed to start the house set. <coughs> so that all worked out great, and I, we did all of that, and you can check the blog posts of all the details. I won't go into the details on, on that too much. Um, so that's where we're at. So now where are we at? Well, as you can probably tell, I got a bit of a head cold, and it's actually, I'm all drugged up right now in order to do this video, because otherwise I'm coughing all night. I can't. Uh, and I was just a nice enough guy. I don't, I, you know, I don't, I like to share things. So now she has it. Oh God, there's nothing worse than seeing your wife sick. So now she's very uncomfortable and it's been 11 days for me and we're supposed to vi visit people at the end of this. And I don't think that's going to happen because I wouldn't, I don't want to expose anybody to this if I don't have to. So we're probably going to work our way towards eventually uh, big bend in Texas. So now you're all up to speed, and in the second part of this video, we're going to do a walk around on the Tiger Adventure vehicle on the outside. So stay tuned, let's take a look at it. So what I thought we would do today was just a walk around on the basic coach portion of the truck. Uh, we're going to do the exterior first, and if we have time, we'll do uh, an interior uh, walk through as well. I'll save the truck itself uh, and the interior of the cab for a separate video. So we're going to start on the coach as if we were getting out of the cab and just doing a, an entire loop around the truck and I'll save the roof for last. Alright, so for the left side of the truck, we're going to start down here in the bottom. This is one of our air fittings. We have two, we have one on each side. So we have access to compressed air when we need it, whether it's for repressurizing our tires or what have you. This is the access panel to the back of our 12 volt refrigerator. The access panel to our propane fired hot water heater. We have an awning up here. We have one on each side. One of the advantages of having an awning on the driver's side of the rig is that A, you're going to lessen the, the amount of heat that's in the rig overall uh, on a hot day, and you get to shade the back of the refrigerator to help it do its job a little bit better as well. The two ports here are for our diesel fired furnace, which you can probably hear a little bit right now because it's running, it's about 30 degrees out here now. This access panel is for our 30 amp uh, shore service, shore powered uh, service. Uh, you can, there's comes with an adapter. There's also a generator plug inside there as well. This is pretty much a standard in the industry, these types of external showers. We have one on the rig. We have a total of three showers, so we have one inside one outside and we have an outside shower on the turtle back trailer as well. External light, my wife likes to refer to as the boogeyman light. There are three of these, they're all LED lights, one on the back and one on each side, and they're all off of a common switch. Have an access point for cable, if you like cable TV, you happen to be in an RV park, that's what, there's where your hookup point would be as well as your city uh, water service point. Diesel uh, fuel goes in here. The DEF goes underneath uh, the hood on the firewall. That's where the service point for that is. One of my gripes about this particular plat the Chevrolet platform is where the Chevrolet decided that they were gonna put their DEF tank, which happened to be behind the right front tire just uh, on the inside of our uh, aluminum step or a chrome step. Gray water drain and spigot drain along with a valve here. You'll notice a couple of these points here, one there and one back here. These are our strut reinforcements for our awning when they're opened up. And that should conclude Oh no, I forgot one major thing here. Our propane service center down here. This is where we service our propane, where the regulator is, and where the shutoff valve is as well, which I need to do now before I forget. Now, that concludes the left side 
of the Tiger Adventure vehicle. All right, so we're going to talk about the back of the rig. On the back of the rig, we have what's known as our aluminous bumper. This is the bumper that uh, was put onto the vehicle in place of the standard bumper that came from the factory. On this particular aluminous bumper, we have a swing away spare tire on its own gate, which I'm not going to pin back, but you do have the ability to pin it back. We're on a slope here, so I'm just going to let gravity do its thing and keep it back for us. The other item is the all-weather storage box. In our storage box, we keep anything from hoses to peat moss for our compost toilet. Anything that we want out of the dust or moisture, we want dry and safe, and it's also lockable. It, too, is on a swing gate. And we are going to pin this one back. Oh, and I forgot, on this, on the side here, we have an accessory, which is basically a shovel and an axe that's lockable. Swing this back open and pin it. Pin it out of the way. Now, in the bumper itself, you have three storage compartments, all of them lockable, which is nice, by a single key. Now one on each end where you can shove things in this way and then one larger one in the center. These however are not weatherproof so any items you put in here you have to count on them either getting wet or a little dusty. Things like chains, toe straps, recovery items and such. Great place for that. So big bulky items you don't care about getting wet they can go in there. We have two robust recovery points on the bumper as well as Obviously, the trailer connection, electrical connection, and the, and the receiver itself. <coughs> Other item here, we have a single point propane outlet. In the event that the gas on our turtleback trailer runs out, our propane on the turtleback trailer runs out, we at least can take maybe some portable grills or whatever that we want to run, in the meantime, we can tap right into here. It's regulated at this point, so all we need is a service hose to the item that we want to run. The tailpipe you see down here is not the tailpipe to the truck. It is the tailpipe to our propane-fired Cummins own-in generator. This generator operates all of our 110 needs. It, uh, it can charge our batteries. Uh, it is also something we would utilize if we were going to run the AC in the vehicle. <coughs> if you want to learn more about some of the issues we had with this generator, you can check out our blog, and I'll leave that link below in our description. Going up the back side of the rig, we have our ladder. Obviously, you've got to utilize the spare tire when it's in the closed position as a, as a way to get up on through the ladder to the roof. We have two antennas on the vehicle. <coughs> the one on the left is a uh, cellular signal booster for cell service. The other on the right side is the what's known as a Wii Boost. It is a Wi-Fi boost antenna. So we have two separate boosters on the truck for uh, either downloading or uploading, depending on what we're, our tasks are at the moment. In the center of the roof, we have a backup camera. The backup camera works only when we're in reverse, which is a good and a bad thing. It's good because we can see where we're going when we're backing up. But I really do wish it worked while on demand while we were driving forward, because our turtle back trailer is a little bit narrow and it's very difficult to see, even using the side mirrors, uh, unless we have the center curtain open on the pass-through up front, we can see a tiny bit through our rear view mirror through the back window. Other than that, you just have to look to see where the shadow is, and that's my wife's job. She looks out the side mirror and sees if she can see the shadow of the trailer, depending on where the sun is. So uh, whose job is it to clean the window? <laughs> It's actually probably my job to clean the window. We can debate that, though. We can? We can. Hmm. You're going to have to get on that. Yeah, okay. So, 
We also have an external light, an LED lighting system, uh, one of the three lights that surround the outside of the vehicle. It's uh, attached to a common switch inside, so if you hear the boogeyman outside at night, you flick the switch and it illuminates everything around the, the coach. And you've seen how many boogeymen? Uh, at uh, this point in time in our adventure, I believe the boogeyman score is up to one at this point. And I don't know if it was really a boogeyman. We thought it was a couple of meth heads, but apparently it wasn't. Fun night. Yeah, it was a fun night. Other than that, let's go up on the roof on, with the drone and we'll give you a description of that. So up on the roof, you're gonna see three large black triangles. Those obviously are solar panels or 100 watt solar panels and they're tied into our electrical system. We have one large white box in the back of the camper, that is our air conditioning unit. You'll also see on the, to the left of that a couple of vents. One is our compost toilet vent, the other is our shower vent, uh, both of which are powered. Then on the right side, about halfway up, is a little whip antenna. That is our, for our coach radio stereo system. We also have a smaller white box up there about halfway up, it's over the bunk area. That's our fantastic fan. And then that circular dish looking thing is our digital TV antenna. And how's that working so the far? digital TV antenna? Yes. I don't know, it really hasn't. I haven't gotten any channels in yet with it to be able to tell. So my wife brings up a very good point that uh, we have not had a whole lot of luck bringing in um, TV channels with it so far, though boondocking probably isn't the best scenario in which you're trying to get uh, digital, digital channels in. So maybe at some point we'll have a debate over satellite TV versus... We might. We might. All right, so that's it for the back of the coach and the top of the coach. I think I remembered everything. If I didn't, I'll put the inset in during the description. And let's move on. Okay, on the right side of the vehicle, we have a storage compartment, dry storage compartment. Uh, we keep odds and ends in here, like um, right now. It's a dish detergent and some other things in here, but it is a uh, weatherproof compartment and lockable. We have an awning on this side like we do the other side and the reason we ordered two awnings on the vehicle is we feel that depending on where we're camping at the time uh, having two awnings will do the most to kind of shade the vehicle and keep the temperatures down. On the other side of the vehicle the advantage of having an awning over there is that it'll actually shade the area where the refrigerator is. So the refrigerator on a hot day keep it shady on that side will help the refrigerator work more efficiently. And at a later date we'll uh, <coughs> show you how the awnings look. Yeah, we'll put those awnings out at a later date. So we have our freshwater supply inlet here, uh, lockable. So we have a uh, 30 gallon freshwater tank. Uh, we don't have any fresh water in there right now because the temperatures at night have been down around the 20 degree mark. The uh, other item up here, we have again, one of those outside lights that are on that common switch we talked about, and they're all LED lights. And we have an outdoor uh, or an exterior power outlet. So if we want to use 110 for anything, we can start up the generator, have an extension cord or a regular cord and just plug in and, and we have power when we need it. Other than that, we have the front door with electric steps so that's the main entrance and then down here like on the other side we have our uh, compressed air fitting so we have a compressed air supply on both sides of the vehicles all right so that should do it for our walk around